Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I'm back with a new project for the Paige Evans design team and surprise, I'm making a mini album. I haven't made a mini album in so long and so today I'm going to do just that. And I'm starting with one of Paige's cut files. This one is called Mini Album Tabbed Edges cut file and it consists of these five little pages. They're so cute and each page is a little bit longer than the previous one and I wanted to do a very heavily mixed media project and so I cut the album on some textured white card stock nothing fancy here and to prep the paper I'm covering all of it with white gesso and I'm going to do this on the front and the back of each page and I'm just using my finger to smudge it down and I just want to say I know that this video is super long but this project did take me about five days to complete and so I have a lot of detail and uh, footage from filming it and so I wanted to include as much detail as I could and I tried to make it as short as possible but it's still quite long so hopefully you'll want to stick around and see how this turns out all right so I let all the gesso dry and the first thing I knew that I wanted to do was add some texture and so I pulled out all five of Paige's stencils and the first one that I'm using here is called heart confetti and it's just a bunch of cute little hearts and I'm going to do that on my cover page and um, I'm going to do a st one stencil on each page here this one is called polka dots and it's just a bunch of teeny tiny little circles and I'm using modeling paste here from Liquitex. I'm just scraping it right over using a palette knife. And if you've never used modeling paste before, it's very thick and creamy. And when it dries, it's, um, it's raised up off the page. And so when you touch the paste, it's very rough and bumpy. And when you scrape it over a stencil like this, you get a really fun shape. Uh, this stencil here is called Doily, and it is gorgeous. And all of these stencils are based on cut files that page designed so you can find all these stencils in cut file form as well this one is one of my favorites it's called sunburst rays and i've used this one before on a recent summer project and so i decided to use it again and when this paste dries and i start to add color on top of it it's just like magic and i always love the effect of using modeling paste on stencils because it's just awesome. So um, I'm also going to be using the Truly Grateful collection, which is Paige's newest collection. It's pretty new. It's just recently come out. And even though it's got a fall feel to it, it is perfect for summer layouts too. And summer projects are my favorite thing to make. And it is full of bright colors, but it's also full of fall colors. And I think you can create a lot of things with it. Um, for almost any season. It's just very, very versatile. So I'm going to show you how I use it today for a very summer layout or mini album. All right, so my cover page here, I got to go with my favorite color, which is pink. And I've pulled out all my favorite shimmers colors over here that match the Truly Grateful collection. And I think I use three different shimmers here. I think I use pink stilettos, I use sweetheart, and I use pop art pink. And this is so easy to do. I let the paste dry. I just spray it right on there, add a little bit of water, and then just turn the page this way and that way and let it run and blend. And that is it. Uh, this looks very complicated, but it really isn't. It's awesome. This is a purple color called Plum Pudding. And then I'm going to also spray in a little bit of Cotton Candy. And I just love watching it spread around the page. And I'm just doing this on top of a paper towel here to kind of catch the paint that drips off the bottom. Um, this one turns out really, really cool. It's green. I, I'm not even a huge fan of green, but I don't know. I'm obsessed with this page here. The green is just awesome. Um, let's see. I used, I believe, Forget Me Not and Oh, oh Say Can You See here. A um, couple different green shades. Um, I've got to use yellow and orange tones on that sunburst page because it's a sun and it's perfect. Um, that yellow color is called mustard seed. It's one of my all-time favorite yellow golden, uh, yellowy golden colors. It is perfect. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous. And it's got like a gold shimmer to it. And then there in the middle, I sprayed some mango tango, which is kind of an orangey coral color. And I love the way this one looks when it's dry. 
And then the last one is where I use the Star Confetti stencil, and I'm going to make this one blue. And I'm using Jenny B. Blue and Chance of Rain, which is kind of a darker blue color. And again, I'm just mixing them together, adding a little bit of water, and then letting it run around and spread and bleed on the page. So now that those are done, you can see the shimmer there on those sun rays. I'm going to let those dry, and then I decide to go through the Truly Grateful 6x8 paper pad. And this collection is loaded with flowers, which is okay by me, because I love me some flowers. And if you know Paige's style, you know she loves florals too. And even though these have a fall vibe, to me, they also have a summer vibe. And so this page here was perfect for fussy cutting out flowers. So that's what I'm going to take some time to do here while my, while my uh, mini album pages are drying. I'm going to just fussy cut out some of these flowers. They, they're yellow, pink, um, mint green color, darker pink, lighter pink, orange. Perfect. This page is also good. It's got some really fun leaves, and I think these leaves look very tropical, and they're perfect. Because this mini album, I haven't even told you what I'm going to be making this mini album for. Duh. It's from our recent trip to the Bahamas. So there's going to be lots of blue water and beachy photos in this and so flowers and leaves and sunshines are perfect so also cut a little sun over there too all right so this is a, a technique that i did in a recent layout where i wanted to pop the um the shape of the stencil up a little bit or not pop it up but make it stand out a little bit more so if you can see what i'm doing here i just sprayed a little or poured a little bit of white acrylic paint and then I use my foam ink blending tool to dab the paint on top of the stencil work very, very lightly. And so it's just going to stick to the raised portion. And you can just kind of see the design pop up a little bit more. And um, for this one, I decided to use some turquoise paint just to add in some little bit shades of color. And it was just kind of an experiment to see. I think the white turned out better because you can see it pop against the colors a little bit more. But yeah, these are dry and I love how they turned out love the shimmer of course shimmers have shimmer most of them do there are some that don't have shimmer but i think all the ones i used here most of them have shimmer i love this sun one so pretty and so textured when you touch these they're all nice and bumpy and rough and since i added the gesso to both sides my paper feels a little bit thicker and a little bit sturdier Okay, so now I got to do the backs because the backs are still white and plain and i decided to not do texture paste or modeling paste on the back. So I'm going to keep those just plain and flat. So I tried to add in a different color here. I went with more of a coral color. I used, I think, Mango Tango on that one. And then on this one, I'm going to mix some blue and green. And again, just kind of add some water, let it cover the page, and then let it drip off the bottom. Um... Yeah, I'm just mixing matching the colors here because, you know, photos are going to go on top of these and so it doesn't have to be perfect. And, um, yeah, I'm going back to the pinks. And then I'm going to come back in with the yellow, that mustard seed color. And some blue leaked on the bottom of that one, but it doesn't matter. It, it I was not looking for perfection here. I, I want this to look handmade. I want it to look kind of messy. And I'm okay if, you know, something messes up or doesn't look perfect. I I just love the colors and I love how this turns out. All right, so I let everything dry. And this is kind of what I got going here so far. You can kind of see now that it's together how each page sticks out a little bit further. And the edges are all different, which I think is really fun. Okay, so the next thing I did was print out all my photos here, and they're all small and tiny. I printed them on, I get asked a lot what kind of printer I use, and honestly, the printer that I'm using is an HP PhotoSmart. I've had it for almost 13 years. It's a dinosaur. Uh, it still works, but it's very old, and I don't even have Photoshop. I use the software that came with my, my um, printer, and it just allows me to kind of drag the side of the photo to make it bigger or smaller. I really don't even measure. I just kind of eyeball it. And so I just made a bunch of photos really tiny and printed them out on a, a eight by 10 size photo paper and then just cut them out. So definitely nothing fancy, but that's how I get my photos 
the size that I want them. So before I start embellishing, I decided to add in a couple more pages. So I went through the six by eight paper pad again and just chose a couple pattern papers to cut more pages out of. And I'm just um, tracing a little bit and then cutting it out. So this shape of this mini album is, you know, pretty simple. So I just kind of did this by hand, took no time at all, just traced and cut to make a couple extra pages. And this is the fun thing about a mini album like this is, you know, you can make it as thick or as, um, you know, skinny as you want because there are holes there to add rings to. And, you know, you can make it, you can add as much stuff in there as you want. So um, you can see how small it is now, but once I'm done with it, it actually winds up being pretty chunky, which is fine by me because um, <laughs> I just wanted to keep adding stuff to it as I went. All right, so now I'm gonna to start to play around with all of those things that I fussy cut out. Like I said, most of the things that I cut were flowers, leaves, and butterflies, and some words. I cut out a couple of uh, letters to create words. There's one sheet in the collection that's just filled with colorful words. And so I cut out a couple of those. Um, I've got lots of pictures here with blue in there. Um, so on the back of the first page, I am using a picture of us at a restaurant. This was our first night there. And then on the purple, the purple side, I'm using a picture of the view from our little bungalow that we stayed at. All right, so back to the title page. I've got a couple of fussy cut flowers and then a fussy cut sun up at the top. Since this is a beachy Caribbean layout or album, um, I have to have some sunshine on there. So that's gonna go right on the cover. And then I'm going to glue that down. I did pop up the sun with some foam. Now these thickers are from the Whimsical Collection. I love them, they're all rainbow. They're foam, they're tiny, they're perfect. And so the title is gonna be Exuma because that's where we were in the Bahamas. And so, um, yeah, it's pretty easy here. Um, I didn't do anything overly complicated. The actual album itself, you know, it looks like it's super complicated, but it really just took a long time to do because I'm very slow, um, but I mainly embellish pretty simple, I think. Um, it's not overly complicated. I do add lots of detail with certain things, but I feel like it's still on the simple side, if that makes sense. Um, because most of the pages here are gonna have one little photo and then some flowers and leaves tucked around it, and that is it. Um, I don't journal on every page here, um, you know, because this album is pretty small, and so it limits the size of things that you can use, and it limits how big your photos can be. Um, you know what would be really cool, and I didn't even think of that until just now, would be to actually print a big size photo and cut it in the size of one of these pages and actually have an entire page be a photo. That would be cool. See, I wish I would have thought of that, but alas, I did not think of that until now. Maybe next time. Um, but yeah, see, like this page is pretty simple. It's just the uh, the photo with some flowers and leaves, and then that's it. I didn't want to cover up a lot of the, the purple or the circles. I wanted that to show. So um, again, you know, if you do mixed media, you do all that work in the beginning, you don't want to cover it all up and uh, you want it to show. So this little card here is from the journal spots from Truly Grateful. And so I cut the butterfly off because I didn't want to cover it up. I'm gonna fussy cut the butterfly that was on the bottom. And I like this little piece because it's small and tiny. It fits right there above my photo and it says together on it. And so I thought that is perfect. And then I fussy cut out the little butterfly to use. And that's gonna be it for this page here. Um, very simple. It's basically like a little mini layout, and so I kind of treat each page as its own little layout. Some of the photos I glue down completely flat. Some of them I raise up off the page. Uh, it just depends, but it definitely does add to the chunky factor, so take that into consideration when you make your mini albums. I know some people like lots of dimensions, some people don't, so um, you know, I hope you can pull different ideas from this to make it your own and kind of do what you'd like to do um, for your mini albums. So this page, again, very simple. One photo, it's of me. I'm laying on a chair with my feet crossed and there's the beach in front of me. 
basically perfection it was amazing and again I just use a little die cut piece and a flower and that page is done so the green page I'm going to use two photos here very small uh, we were on a boat one day a little boat taxi going across to another island where I found I've already made a layout of the, the small picture of me standing in front of that big signpost but I printed this one really tiny and again I'm just going to overlap those pictures and embellish with some little flowers and the six by eight paper pad is perfect for this because everything in that paper pad is on the smaller scale as far as the designs and images go and so these small tiny flowers are perfect for this because they match the little tiny photos so again that's it sweet and simple on the back I'm going to do basically the same I'm gonna pull in one of the the words that I fussy cut out I cut out magical so I'm going to put that up at the top and then come in with another die cut piece here that says picture perfect. And then my photo and a flower, I think, and then that page is done. So the actual designing of each page was, was really fun and um, pretty simple, but um, still, you know, detailed, but not overly detailed. I think the photos still stand out the most, which is the whole point. Um, again, I add some dimension here with some foam and I don't go too crazy on it. Just simple and uh, ruffle up the edges a little bit just to add some more texture. And then I do glue down all those letters. And now for this one, I um, made sure this one was super dry and I ran it through my sewing machine off camera. I went along each of the sun's rays with some yellow thread and it adds some really fun texture up close. I know it's hard to see it from here, but um, I love how that turned out. And I uh, had to use the sunshine sticker from the Truly Grateful sticker sheet because, you know, sun, sunshine, it's perfect. And I debated about whether just to leave this page alone without a photo as is because I love how the colors blended. I love how it turned out. So I make that, set it aside for now. Um, turn it over and work on the back and again it's another picture of us we're standing on a sandbar out in the middle of the Caribbean it's like all this deep blue water and then there's this big giant sandbar right in the middle of nowhere it was very very cool um, so we got our boat tour guide to take our picture there and again I'm using a sticker it says this is the good stuff and then some flowers tucked in there with some leaves so um, quite a few mini flowers in this collection and again perfect for summer I I love how Paige has the ability to make things seasonal yet multi-seasonal if that makes sense so these would totally work for fall they would work for spring definitely for summer and I know that there's a way to make a Christmas layout with this collection as well um, yeah love 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 it multi-purpose all right, so back to the little pages that I made myself that did not come in the cut file. I'm going to punch holes in those and try to decide where I'm going to put those. So you can kind of see what I've got going here so far. I'm going to add some journaling. I decide on the back of this plaid sheet is where I'm going to do some journaling since it's white. Uh, I'm not going to do any mixed media to this. I'm just going to add a couple of small flowers, kind of run them off the page there. And then come in with my T-square ruler to draw some lines and then add my journaling. And I just use my black fine tip Sharpie. I do that off camera, but I do write some journaling on there. And then the second page that I made from the 6x8 paper pad, I am going to add some mixed media to that. So I'm going to smudge down some white gesso because uh, this paper is very thin. It's definitely not made for anything liquid. So I want to prep that to handle the liquid. And then I'm going to use this epoxy sun sticker. It is dimensional and shiny and cute and I love it. And it's going to be kind of peeking up between those two photos there. So I do go back to the sunshine page and I decide to add this picture of the sunrise um, from our, I took this, I woke up early every morning because the sun comes up right in our window and it was perfect because I got to see the sunrise, which I'm never up at home to see the sunrise. Well, I am, but I'm usually getting my self and my kids ready for school so on the beach it's so beautiful and inspiring so I had to take pictures of that and um, yeah on this page that I made I'm going to use a sticker that's a little frame there and I use another word that I fussy cut out that says amazing 
and I don't do any mixed media on this page. Um, I'm going to use one of these little squares here from one of the Truly Grateful papers as a backing. I decided to go with this orangey yellow color um, since I've got a lot of blue and pink going on in that photo. I thought that uh, burnt orangey color would make it stand out a little bit more. And then I add in a big blue flower. And then that page is done. Almost done. I go back to this page. The gesso is dry. So I'm just going to add some pink to it because I got a lot of blue going on in the photos and then a lot of yellow with that sun. So I wanted some pink behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with the shimmers again. Let it run and bleed off the page there. Let that dry. Go back to this page and glue everything down. I hope you're still hanging in there with me. Like I said, I know this video is super long, but it did take me a long time to do. And so I, I just, I tried to, you know, show you the bare minimum of what I did, but it just still wound up being very long. So I hope that's okay. Um, I go back to this page, I let it dry, and I did some machine stitching. And I did that with light blue thread just to add some detail. And then I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it. I glue down that epoxy sun and then I'm going to pop the photos up. And these two photos are, let's see, I've already scrapped the one of me on the right. I am just sitting on the beach under the umbrella drinking a giant pina colada. And then when I flip the camera around, that's the view. Actually, I think I got in the water and then took a picture of the beach. But still, yeah, so, so pretty. The water in the Bahamas is pictures don't do it justice it is literally like a swimming pool it's so clear and just gorgeous you just can't help but stare at it the whole time all right so let's go back to this page here this is uh, the back of the amazing page and I'm gonna make it kind of a corally and yellow color um, I'm down to my last two pages here and these pages are gonna contain the pictures of the animals that we saw on our trip and so this page here is going to be about the swimming pigs i'm sure you've heard about the swimming pigs there is an island that has all these little wild pigs running around and then this page um let's see i've got a picture of me swimming with some sharks which is a whole saga in itself but yes i'm in that picture there on the left uh, and there's sharks all around me i didn't die thank goodness but i can say that i've done that um, a picture of um, a man feeding a giant sea turtle and then pictures of me feeding crazy wild Jurassic Park style iguanas. We were feeding them lettuce and they were eating it. It was quite crazy. But yeah, they were just iguanas all over this random island that we stopped at. And apparently Nicolas Cage owns that island. And I believe it's called Goat Key. There are no goats there. It was just iguanas. And I did not see Nicolas Cage, but interesting fun fact um anyway again i'm just gonna um overlap the flowers or overlap the photos tuck in some flowers and some leaves and then that page is done this page has got me holding a little baby pig he started squealing i had to put him down they told us we could hold them if we could catch them but the minute they start squealing you gotta let them go so i said get ready to take my picture i picked up the pig he squealed yeah um the other one is this giant pig that kept following me around in the water and so I just got down and took some pictures of him and he was he never tried to you know bite me but um some of them were kind of aggressive if you had food in your hand they were coming for you so yeah had to be careful all right so this turns out really cool this circle with the heart this is in the truly grateful die cuts or ephemera and the the holes are already punched in it it's, it just comes like this it's perfect for stitching so I had an idea I wanted to make this rainbow but I did not feel like changing my needle out with a bunch of different color thread so I thought okay I'm gonna attempt this and see if it works out so I used white stitched all through the holes got it done it's very dimensional on the back because of all the thread and I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna use my shimmers to try to color this in rainbow and it actually turns out I was giddy about how this turned out i was like yay this worked 
So I just use the nozzle of the colors here and dab a little bit of the color right on top of the thread. Use my finger to kind of smudge it. I've never tried to smudge color onto thread before, but it worked. Who to thunk it? Um, so yeah, I'm going to make a rainbow embroidered heart this way. And it worked. And I like the way it turns out. So if you don't want to uh, use a bunch of different color thread, just cheat and do it this way. And I think the effect is really neat. Because um, since I'm doing rainbow, you know, one color blends into the next. And yeah, it worked out great. And it was a lot less time than having to switch out different color threads. So, And can I just point out how gorgeous my paper towel looks? I am, um, yeah, it's just from all the colors dripping off from all the pages. I still have this t this paper towel sitting right here beside me. I didn't have the heart to chunk it because it's gorgeous and I feel compelled to try to use it on a layout. I've never thought of using a paper towel on a layout before, but it's so pretty. And look at my heart. You're going to see it up close later in the photos. I think it turned out really great. And to take the rainbow messy thread idea a step further, I peeled off all the rainbow colors of my tangled thread that I use for sewing and all my tangled thread obsession. I pulled out all the rainbow colors and then I'm using all four of my fingers to circle around and make a giant circle using all these colors. And of course they kept getting tangled, but I worked it out. So now I have this giant messy thread nest of rainbow colors that I want to layer behind this circle. And I think this turns out really, really cool. If you like messy stuff and you like rainbow stuff and you like thread, then this was perfect for you because I didn't even have to add um, dimension behind there because all that thread from the stitching made it stick up by itself. And then I got the hunch, the hunch, that didn't make any sense. <laughs> I got the idea to um, make a shaker pocket. So I just used some random plastic from some stickers, cut it small, stitched around three sides, added some sequins. By the way, these sequins come from the Truly Grateful collection. Love them. And then I just stitched the, ed the other edge so it's closed. And now I've got this little pocket. It's so cute. I should do this more often for projects because it was fun, easy, and fast. And it's so neat. I just love it. I'm going to make it its own little page. And so I'm just going to use my hole puncher there to punch in some holes so I can stick it on the rings. And I'm almost done here. Okay, off camera, I put everything on the rings. And so now I can flip through it here, which I will do in a second. But um, I'm very inspired by Paige, El blah, 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 Paige Evans' albums. I love how she always adds ribbons and threads and trinkets and charms and things to the, um, the rings and the binding of her books and albums. And so I thought I wanted to use that as inspiration and do that. So I went through my stash of who knows how many spools of ribbon I own and pulled out some rainbow colors and just tied them in a knot on the rings. And then I remembered I had not used my charms from the Horizon collection and these are all travel themed. And so I just pulled out some embroidery thread from my stash and thought I'm going to thread the charm onto it and then just knot it up and tie it along the uh, the rings as well. So I have some little trinkets kind of hanging off the edge there. I use four of them and they're travel themed. So it worked out great. And you can kind of see them there. It's hard to see them, you know, all at one time because they do dangle and hang there. But I just thought they were cute. And I love that. I love the fact that there's all this messy ribbon hanging off the side and all these colors. I love it. All right. So I'm gonna do a little flip through here. I also took the embroidery thread and wound it around the outside of that heart. I love that texture and that color that that gives. All right, so the pages, like I said, are pretty simple. Um, you got the photo and you pretty much got some flowers and that's it. Um, I left that plaid paper blank just because the colors are gorgeous. The back of it has some journaling on it. The green page, again, photos and flowers. Photo and flowers <laughs> and some words. Um, here's my little shaker pocket. I just think it adds some fun texture and detail and it was fun to make. I love that they move all around and the stitching is very messy, but who cares? I love things messy. Um, there's my pink sun page. There is the, uh, the stitching heart with all that messy thread. Love that. There's my sunshine page again with some stitching. Another basic page, flowers, sticker, 
I did stitch through amazing there on that page. That's my little page that I made from a 6 by 8 paper. There's the Swimming Pigs page. Again, I used the Whimsical Foam Thickers for that. And the last page. Simple. The back is, is just pink. That was it. I love how this turned out. It was so much fun to make. It took me forever, but I got it done. I've got a ton of close-ups here. So uh, you can kind of see how chunky it turned out. And again, you don't have to make this as chunky. You can make it very flat with um, no adhesive foam. And you could also use ribbon to tie it if you don't have any rings. Um, so that's another option. But yeah, here are all the pages, all the details. Uh, I really love how this turned out. It was a labor of love for me. It took forever. And again, I apologize for this half an hour long video, but it was hard to condense five days worth of uh, time into just a short video. And I wanted to keep the details in there so you could truly see how I made it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I've got tons of close-ups. I've got even more close-ups of all the... Um, the really detailed things that I did coming up here. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to link the cut file down below um, and the stencils and all that good stuff. I love how the thread looks wrapped around that heart there. And now you can see all the texture from the stencils on the pages. There's a little shaker pocket. The stencils are so pretty. And again, they could go for fall or, or summer. There's the heart mess. I love that, that messy thread. I uh, love it. The sunshine page. And here's the pictures of the end with all of the uh, little trinkets and threads. But anyway, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.